So let's wrap up and have a final uh, clip that we talk about our recommendations and give some uh, strategies uh, for installing fiber on your campus. So obviously based on what you've heard me talk about, about multimode fiber and single mode fiber, don't install any multimode at all. Never install multimode. You're going to only install single mode fiber and you're going to run this single mode fiber in a star or a um, hub and spoke configuration from the core network to individual buildings. We will also run fiber cabling in a star configuration or hub and spoke inside of buildings from the main network rack to every other network rack. One of the things I wanted to point out is you won't actually, the fiber cables won't actually tend to be in a star configuration simply because you're not going to run a separate fiber run from your core location out to each individual building in a different path. And we will talk about this in future uh, talks, but often you will have a duct bank, a, a bank of pipes that are in the ground. All of the fiber cabling will go in this single duct bank. So even though it potentially is a star configuration, you, you know, often the, the fiber cables will all follow the same path. Now this is something you need to think about as you start to use your network and it becomes mission critical is you don't want a single cut. If all the fiber cable runs in a set of pipes and somebody comes and digs up those pipes and breaks them, that's broken your entire network. So you need to think from a redundancy perspective and a future proofing perspective that at some point you're going to want to have two paths to each individual uh, building so that a single fiber cable cut doesn't sever your network. So one of the tricks here is to reduce costs. You can run a large fiber cable, uh, so a fiber cable that has 144 fibers. In this case, we actually ran some fiber cables with 288 fiber strands in them and then splice onto that large cable and run smaller cables to the surrounding buildings where that cable ends. So here's a quick example. So again, this is planning for the future. If we get money to serve one building, say there's a really important uh, physics uh, faculty in a, in a building and they really, really need some network, um, and so you get finances to dig a trench and put pipe in the ground and pull fiber cable to that building, look towards the future and think about what else is happening. If you run a fiber cable from the core location to this building to be served and you notice there's three buildings adjacent, if your goal is to have six single mode fiber cables from your core location to each building, rather than running a six fiber cable, what we can do is we can run a 24 fiber cable and then we have enough fibers to provide six fibers to each of those buildings when we get enough money to extend the fiber on. Those fiber cables could be installed and terminated in patch panels at all these locations or you can actually physically splice the six fibers out of the 24 fiber cable onto the six fiber cable that goes to one of the remote buildings and notice that the, you're going to look at me and say, wait, 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 you said we can't daisy chain. That's daisy chaining. And in a sense, you're right. If I cut that 24 strand cable, it's going to knock out all of the served buildings. So it will absolutely knock out all of the served buildings. However, if there's a network problem in the building that served with the 24 strand fiber cable, it's not going to affect anything that happens to the other buildings simply because the fiber cables are joined together. So you could lose power in that building, you could have a big broadcast storm in that building, you could have a huge virus go happening in that building. Doesn't affect the other buildings because uh, they have their own dedicated fibers from the core network location. So putting this all together, I'm showing a core network location, I'm showing in building one that we've run a, a larger fiber cable to the rack and then uh, fiber cables to adjacent buildings as well as fiber cables to additional network racks inside the building. And then we put this all together. Here we have our recommended OS2 
fiber cable going everywhere and we have category six cabling serving the station outlets that are uh, pulled off of the network racks.